Oh, let's see, what was I going to do before I so rudely interrupted myself with thought? Why would I try to think on a Friday? Right? You guys ready for auto show coming up? You guys are all awake and excited to be here, I can tell. Are you ready for a life-changing experience? You don't understand it? It's not like people don't want to be up this early on a Friday? This class used to start at 8. So... Yeah, our first classes at Northwood always started at 8. That's why, like, Dweaver was late for classes the first week or two because he kept thinking that class started at 9.30, not 9, because it went 8 to 9.20 was the first one and so on. That's why I showed up and stood out here for a while. Like, why can't I get in my classroom? Um, because I was early. Right? Nothing like screwing up in reverse, being early. Mm -hmm. No, doing your job and doing it well is screwing up in reverse if you're trying to get fired. I know who would do that, right? No one. So anyway, uh, let me pull the textbook up. This is a wonderful thing. I was looking up some stuff and it always kind of, every now and then you think about the technology you're using and everything else and uh, you come to realize that, man, it's amazing some of the things that we can accomplish these days. You know, Northwood's uh, curriculum is driven by advisory councils, which is made up of business professionals. Uh, some of them are alumni, and some aren't, but you know, you're talking like CEOs, CIOs, business owners, different things like that. They give us feedback on how to, uh, not how to teach, but what to include in our majors, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it's interesting because you can get a lot more people involved when you can do it like digitally through blue jeans or something like that. Because otherwise, you're asking people to drive from Detroit to Midland to sit there for a couple hours, have a catered meal, you know, which that got a lot better. Our catering is so much better than it used to be. I'm not a dog, why are you feeding me this? <laughs> Unless you wait in line for the the grill, right? Yeah. Even then? What? I mean I don't like the cat food here. Oh. Have you wait don't they have that <coughs> cook to order thing still? Uh, uh I don't remember what it's even called. They don't they only have it like sometimes. Like they'll put up a sign saying, "Due to extreme difficulty hiring people, it's not open." Like half yeah, the wolf den. Yeah, the wolf den's permanent or not permanently. Yeah, it's, that's over there. Yeah, it's consistently closed. Yeah, and and I, I, I was talking about the actual room. calf. Yeah. yeah. They had that one section. It's that, closed like half the time. Oh, there we go. I haven't been to the calf in like a year. Why don't they try to hire some students? Yeah, it's not Northwood, right? It's another company. I don't get it. It's an interesting concept because the people that used to do our uh, catering was a company called Sedexo, and what was weird about Sedexo is that they're the ones that actually do all the food prep and that for prisons <coughs> and I'm not kidding it, that's 
that was their primary account, like one of the most major accounts was the prison system. Yeah. And I'm like, feeding you guys prison food back then. It wasn't really, because, I mean, different grades, obviously, but I, I thought that was a interesting concept. Um, let's see, where were we? We left off. I think we actually covered everything in here. Right? <coughs> Function print. In the intro to single and double coded strings, etc. I think we've got yes. Does uh, module three do something? Uh, depends where we're at. I think we still have at least one or two people that are still having problems with the stuff. Um, you know, if that's the case, well, I can deal with just those one or two on their own. I don't want to. The goal is that you have it done, but the thing is, is it really is self-paced as long as you have all eight done by the end of the semester. Okay. You know, I have someone that's already passed their fourth and stuff like that. So if you want to go ahead, feel absolutely free to go ahead. If you lag behind, you're just giving yourself more work in the future. Make sense? So indirectly, yes, no. So. I tend to be fairly relaxed on due dates anymore because, yeah, you can keep due dates and then you'll just keep getting excuses. Or you can be flexible and not get excuses. And there are such things as valid excuses and there are such things as my grandmother died and then Next year, I hear from the same person, my grandmother died. Unless possible, you might have to. But, probability? Mm. <coughs> so anyway, um, I think we... I think we got past most of this. Because we have looked at the if statement, comparison operators... Uh, getting input for I actually do want to look here real quick um, This is actually important to see That's just goofy That is just I wanted to zoom in on this and when I zoom in it makes the table of contents bigger That's just strange. There, let's try it that way. There we go. Okay, so those are important to understand. Those are the things that we can actually test for. Um, and the key ones, obviously, are the equals equals is to test something to see if it's equals, but the Exclamation equals is not equal. Um, and then with the print statement we did, that mattered. Right? But with an if else structure, it doesn't matter that much because if I was to test something, let me pull up a Word doc because I've figured out if I write on the board it's not in the video, that's a problem. Why is it coming up this way every single time? Delete that. Somehow that's just a standard. Um, if I was to say something on the lines of if second sorry about that So if I was to say something like if A is not equal to B, then we do uh, 
so it print whatever one plus two is, right? L. No, it's L. I don't know why they abbreviate else for L if. I don't understand why they do that. Um, else, uh, we're going to print. Well, it's lowercase, right? I just saw I screwed up up here. It doesn't matter. It is case sensitive, so, well, it changes it anyway. Otherwise, we're going to print the word uh, no. It doesn't really matter. We're just giving an example. So, that's one way. We could test to see if it's not equal to. But if we test if it's equal to, if I was to change this to equal equal, and say if A equal equal B, then we can move these <coughs> around, right? Oops. So we could actually move those around, correct? It's the same test. It just matters which direction you're going. So do I have to understand not equals to all the time? No, not necessarily, because I can test to see if it's equal to and just do the opposite things, right? Um, and that, that goes with any of the tests, correct? It's all your logic. It's the way you're thinking about things and that that matter. If I want to test to see if something's less than, I can say I could test to see if it's greater than, and if it is, then it does the opposite, right? So your true and your false uh, results get flipped. That's the only difference. So, yeah. It all relates to your logic, which relates to your flowchart and how you <coughs> originally set it up. Right? So whatever your flowchart is, that's what you want to follow. Because if you have a problem and you go back to your flowchart, you want to make sure that it's set up right. Okay? Not the most difficult thing, but it was a concept I thought was important enough to talk about. So, there's that. Um, there was something else in here uh, about quoted strings, etc., etc. You can use single quotes and then you can put double quotes inside of it. So, single quotes is the whole thing and then the double quotes inside actually put the quotes, right? Now, if you do the same thing with single quotes, it's going to tell you that you have invalid syntax. It doesn't know how to handle certain things. And that's why it's an important, important to actually look at some of this stuff because it just can't do certain things. And it's not like Replit that can't do it. It's actually, um, I think this is the one, great, yeah. It's not Replit that can't do it. It's the actual Python language. Whoever developed uh, the Python language has made it so it can't do certain things. Um, if I was to go, and I always suggest as, as you're going through, Try the different things that it's talking about and see what happens. You know, and make sure. Textbooks can be wrong, believe it or not. I've seen it numerous times. So if I say, I could do something like that and it's going to be okay. So if I run it, you get the quotes in there. Okay. If I put single quotes around there, it doesn't understand it um, simply because it doesn't know how to handle the opening and closing quotes. Okay. You don't want to do this. You want to do it correctly. If you see an error, number one, you know, they, they mentioned in the book that it'll give you an invalid syntax error. Well, if I run it, it will. But why am I even running it if I can see I have an error in my code? Okay. 
it is a predictive language. It can give you, it'll tell you certain things as you go along. It also has autocomplete on a lot of things. So if I was to actually put the quote in here, notice how it automatically, well, that was weird. I don't know why I put this. Did I not have both of those? Oh, that's why. Yeah. That's what I was trying to do. Imagine that. So anyway, the world is blah, blah, blah. Okay. It's almost the same as in, uh, I'm trying to think, in Excel, something like this happens where if you try to print a number, you don't put it in quotes, it actually lists it as a number. Uh, if you don't type a date in properly, or, or let's say you format the date as text instead and you type it in, it doesn't work as a date, it's not going to filter like a date and everything else. So I mean, it all has to do with how you're entering it and why you're doing it. Okay? Because obviously this is different than if I was to do a comma here and it's going to uh, not there yeah there I want to see what happens here yeah so it actually does work uh, why did it do that yeah so it's the same concept as you look at things, you know, you have commas and stuff. Well, I'm not separating the commas by uh, after a statement. So if I was to do this after a statement, my comma one is going to put the number one in there. So it all has to do with how you're actually laying things out, making sure your syntax is proper. Uh, just like writing a sentence in, in, in plain English or in an um, English comp class or something like that. If you don't include the commas properly in that, if you read it out loud, it doesn't make sense. It looks fine, but it doesn't make sense when you read it out loud because you're not telling people where to pause, etc. So just like any other language, you have syntax and rules that you have to follow. I think we're already there. Uh, looking to see if there was anything else that was highly important. I don't think so. Yeah. Just making sure nothing much was left in there. see anything else that we absolutely need in all of that then uh, we get to chapter 3 which is control statements and stuff of that nature um, <coughs> which we go back to the if else etc etc uh, we, t we, we talked about why we talked about four so as you actually look through the chapter most of the stuff you should have seen right already um, we did not do break statement and that's that you can actually break a loop uh, it comes in handy when you're running a program it can run in handy if you're hit a certain like if you hit a continuous loop that just keeps printing without the break statement it will just keep printing and then you have to physically or almost like hard boot out of it you know you know the difference between a hard boot and a cold boot you know, control delete you know, reboot the machine hold the power button control delete is a soft boot you don't actually shut the computer off 
a hard boot, you actually turn the computer off and back on. So it's this almost the same concept. It's just going to keep <coughs> running and running and running, and then you have to actually physically stop it. Okay. Um, now, the loops are always an interesting thing because if I go back to here, and I want to go, I think I had it in here. Maybe I didn't. No, right here. I don't want to use that one. I don't want to use that one. It has a for loop, but I want to use a simpler one. Do I have it? Give me one second here. So here's the simplest while, and I want to talk about the loops and stuff like that. And I, I said something about it last class, and a for loop is like for each change in a value do a, a thing, while a while is saying, okay, while count is less than 10, so I'll only do it while this value is true. It seems like the same concept, and it's not. You could potentially use them in that, like, yeah, I don't even want to say that. You could potentially use them interchangeably if you know the logical structure behind them because here I actually create a counter and that count keeps um, going as long as it is less than 10 as soon as it hits 10 it stops so it'll do this it'll do this 10 times so if I click run right now it'll go to 9 because it starts at 0 and that's because I set it equal to 0 right here if I set this equal to 5, it's only going to do it 5 times. Okay, it's going to show what it started as initially, and then it's going to incrementally change. Now, a for loop is good if you're reading lines from a text file. So for each line change, read this value in. For each line change, read this value in. And it will do that until it doesn't have another line. Okay? So, give you an example of that, or what I'm talking about anyway. Um, let me go here. What would happen is, as long as there were no hard, uh, well, as long as there's still data to read, it would keep doing the same loop. Uh, it comes in really handy if you're trying to read in values from a text file, which tells me that I do have one to show you uh, set up because I have a journal somewhere in here. There it is. This should have it. Because somewhere I read it in. See, I did it with a while loop. I don't see a four in here. Remember how I said you can use them kind of interchangeably? I used it interchangeably in this one. I didn't mean to do that, but I did it. So I'm looking for a very, uh, it might be in this one. Yeah. So, here we're actually opening a text file called recipe file, which happens to be over here. Um, so we're opening recipe file as whatever. And then for each line in F, okay, because I'm opening that file as this F. Yeah, it can be confusing. It's like, what are you doing here? Blah, blah, blah. Getting a little nerve-wracking sometimes. Um, but what's happening is I'm saying, hey, uh, open this file. I actually could have actually done 
instead of uh, doing this right here, I could have actually just put this text here inside of here. Okay. Because this is a variable that contains this, I could have actually replaced that name with that text. Follow me? Always pay attention to that because this is sort of, that that is a little inefficient what I did there, which that doesn't matter in itself, but the more times you do inefficient code, the more problematic it can be because it starts eating up resources <coughs> and everything else. Uh, in this case, that's not a big deal, but if I was to rewrite this, I would have probably taken that out of there because there's absolutely no reason for it. So, um, this right here is a variable, but it is what's called an array. An array is a list of items, basically, or a list of values, and it gets filled in a linear fashion, so you can fill an array with multiple pieces of data, right? So, here I am. I created this array called current ingredients, blah, 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 and I can store multiple values in that single array, and then I can write them all at the same time if I want to. Um, so here I open the file. Uh, I'm reading it as F. You have no choice there. You have to read it in as F. So I'm actually using a text file, reading the values in. For every line in F, so as long as there's lines, as long as there's hard breaks and stuff in there, and there's actually uh, text on a line, it will keep doing this, and it will pull in the first line. So I say words equals line dot split. So I'm literally breaking up word by word. Well, let me show you what's in the file, because that might help you understand too. If I go here, this is what it looks like. Okay. This is what the file looks like. Maybe I should run it and show you what the output of this program looks like. You agree? Sure you do. So that bombed out. I got to look back at my full file. Uh, <coughs> ingredients you have separated by spaces. Let's try eggs. Yes. I'm wondering if I controlled for caps or not. So it actually finds the word eggs in that document and says, hey, you're able to do scrambled eggs. Well, what it's literally doing is this. It's looking at, the, it's looking at that text file, and for every line that it starts, it is literally looking for a value called eggs. It is literally filling, remember that array I was talking about? It's literally filling the array with the values. So it's pulling all the values in that's on a specific line and it finds it. <coughs> that's a for loop. So for every change in the line, pull it in and put it somewhere. Okay. So, looks difficult um, when you see the code. Do I want to add a recipe? If I say yes, it's going to enter the title, then I can do it, and so on. Um, the splitting of it's what really matters, because I'm filling the array in with all the text, and then I'm splitting it, and by splitting it, I'm taking all the values, separating them as individual words. That's why I can find eggs. It's just filling the document, looking for eggs, etc. Okay? Glad you all agree. Uh, 
and a lot of it's the same code over and over again just so you know um, the write statement is kind of the same way we will be using this uh, rather soon so the read and write to a text file we will be using okay because we started by and you know what let me let me steal some code here There's a break. Looking to see any new ingredients. Let me make sure where I named the file. Looking for, well, you know what? Let's go back to the other one. Let's go back to the other one. Let's go back to journal because I want to steal this code because I want to make our program do something different and give you guys something to follow along with. Okay? I'm just going to take all of this. I'm going to go to the program that you guys started writing along with me, right? The answer I think is yes. So pull up your machines and be ready to work. And if you don't, I'm going to assume you were sleeping or you just didn't care about your grade anymore. See how that works? Yeah, see? And if you don't care about your grade anymore, guess what I don't care about? Your grade, your grade. Your grade yes. My grade doesn't matter. We're working on the same project we've been working on. Yep. I think we... That's not the one I was working on. I was working on the Hello World. Correct. Somehow I ended up with plus minus one. This is where we were, right? Follow me? Okay. Now, the interesting thing is you can take code from just about anywhere. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go out here to Blackboard. I'm going to put this code that I copied out in our Blackboard course, course so you don't have to type it all. All we have to do is edit it. Make sense? You happy about that? I'm going to put it out here as an announcement. Uh, oh, mine slash 24 slash 2021. And I'm doing this because that's a lot easier for you. It might actually show up in your email in a second if you need it to be there. It doesn't really matter. And keep formatting. Submit. There. So that's what that's going to look like. Okay, we're only working with a bit of this code, so we're going to be pasting it all in, but we're going to be getting rid of quite a bit of it, but we will use it again, so it's okay that it's out there, okay? Glad you all agree. When you get into Replit, you're going to do yourselves and me a favor, you're going to paste all that code. And then we're going to do something else. But I will wait until you get to this point. Once you get to this point, what do you do once you get to this point? Sit back like this. Get ready. Because I want to know when everyone's to this point where you copied that code and threw it in your Hello World program that we were working on. Right? Don't worry, failure to do this only results in failure of the course. It's no big deal. You can take it again. By the way, I teach it again. I'll never forget the time I was... It was an announcement in our course. Go to announcements. 
Oh, the thing from week one? No. No, it's just announcements. If you go to announcements, it's there. Are these lines supposed to be spaced out? No, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. 194 lines. Rule number one, I'm always right. Rule number two, if I'm ever wrong, refer back to rule number one. Okay? Okay. Now it's not supposed to be, but it's okay because it'll be easier to read the code. So. So, there is a boatload of code here compared to what we're used to. And we have to make sense of it. That is my favorite thing in the world to do. Make sense of something that doesn't make sense. Correct? Yeah. So, because we don't need all of this. We literally need maybe 10 lines of it. He's like, why did I copy it all then? Because that's the way we learn. We look through the code. We determine what we don't need. Okay? Is everyone here? Copied it in, pasted it in. I hope. You probably have all kinds of uh, errors. Odds are. Yeah. Um, you know what? You just, you made a point and I've got to fix it now because. Exactly. The indentations are messed up. So I am going to repost this as a word file or something like that because I just I didn't think about that part because otherwise this is going to be an absolute nightmare so control Z if you pasted that in and then uh, I'll put it out here in a different fashion okay which I think I can do via weekly folders <coughs> This is week five, right? Uh, can I put it in here? Will it take it this way? That looks like it did it right. Yeah, try that. So, That's posted. I'm going to go back and get rid of the announcement because that will screw up anyone that's not here. So I'm going to delete the announcement. Go back up. Go to week five, which is out there now. And yes, it's in week five folder. You'll find something that says code for 924. Just copy that whole thing. Control C, paste it into Replit, and that <coughs> should get rid of all those errors that you are suffering from. So we can start a new one or do you want it on that other one? Still? I want it on the other one still. So if you pasted it in just undo the previous one, just control Z, it should get rid of it, then paste the new one in. I still have an indentation error. How many? Well, it's just one, but it's the first one. Mine is good. Really? Okay. Yeah, help him. Okay, throw a few extra enters in because I don't want to confuse our original program that ended up with print you get an A, right? That was our original program. Yeah. That was the last line of code of our original program. Hit enter a couple times, put a couple hash marks in there, and say, uh, write to text file. Okay? That way you know what it's doing, correct? 
because you should all just like you should always create a flowchart for a program, you should always comment your code. If you're not commenting your code, what you're doing is you're messing it up for people in the future. Because you might actually create a program someday that you might leave the employer, you might create code someday that you might leave the employer, and if you don't do that, the people that replace you are going to have a nightmare if they have to fix anything. Because they are going to have to literally read the majority of the program to find where to make changes. You don't want to do that. Can you scroll up a little bit? Nope. Please? Scroll up that way? That way? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that's the original, right? Yeah. And it stopped at this line. Yeah. I threw this comment in there. That way I know that's where all my new code is. Okay? And then we're going to start looking at that code line by line to determine what we need from it. Okay? And notice, I actually have some other stuff in here, right? We're going to keep certain things. We're going to get rid of certain things. We'll probably keep the date and time. Why not? Right? Because, remember, from date, time, import, date, time. Well, where are we getting that from? Or from date, time, import, date, time. Well, probably that's an import. We're importing a package, right? Remember the one class where I said import? Yeah. We were importing a package. You have a problem still back there? No. Oh, you're always so happy. I want his life. <laughs> I don't want his life. He just seems happy. Anyway, um, so we're going to keep this line because we're getting a date. We're going to keep this line because we're actually just telling it the date that we want. I want dot now, and then I can format it and everything else. So this part, if you notice, I have format, date, and time. So I'm saying exactly what's happening. And right here, I'm saying print full date. Well, full date, all that is, is the date being formatted. Okay, so I'm telling you, hey, I want dot today, string time frame, I want percent A, percent B, and so on. So I'm actually saying, this is the way I want this date to be laid out. Right? Why is, why is that not in ours? What's that? It's not in ours. Yeah, if you pasted all my code in, it is. The code that I just gave you guys? That's literally a couple lines. Yeah. We we stopped here. The print, you get an A. And then we moved down to, remember I added this right to text file. And then we actually have entry text, meal entry, while entry, and so on. And then we ended up down here, get the date and time from the system. Okay. Follow me? Find it? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's not the same line, that's why. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. It's, you, can't go by the, you can't go by the line number out here. You have to actually scroll as I go through and find it and so on. I um, got Okay. So, um, we don't know if we necessarily need this test and stuff. We might not use it. We're going to leave it there temporarily. We'll come back up to it. Okay. Uh, these variables might change names if we're going to keep them. Make sense? Do me a favor. As is, run this. And it says enter an integer between 1 and 10, and I'm going to enter a 3. Hit enter, hello world, enter your name. Uh, I have just put a 5 in there. You have to work for it. Enter a new name. <coughs> I hit enter. You have to work for it because it's case sensitive. How'd that happen? It says that. But now it gives me a date. <coughs> right? It still hasn't exited everything, has it? Right. So I'm going to actually say B, hit enter. Enter the food eaten. Does anyone see anything that happened on the left hand side? Yeah, you didn't notice that part. I'm going to show you. I'm going to delete this. 
when I run this, pay really close attention to what's happening. This is all part of our original program, right? Because I added, I added text to show the testing and stuff. Um, yours might just start here, right? Because I was using this file to test other things in the previous or the following class. But if I enter David and I hit enter, it takes me here. Watch what happens when I put like a L here and hit enter. Watch what happens on the left hand side. What did it do? Yeah, it created a text file. Nice. If it doesn't do that, you literally have to go into here and say, uh, not right there, uh, you have to go into here. Well, no, you should create a new one. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> That's why. I have to add a file, and I would actually have to name the file and stuff like that. That's not what we're doing, though. Okay. I have code in here that creates that file. Let's find it. Okay. So, so far, I'm going to actually get rid of these lines of code here because I don't want to have to type a number in every time. Okay. So, I'm going to start there, which is probably where you guys were starting, with just the hello world. Okay. And then I'm going to go down to the new code. Right to a text file. Entry text Y, meal entry is Y. Um, well, entry text equals Y, or entry text equals Y, or entry text equals yes. One of these should have been capital. All this is doing is testing to see if it matches any of those. So I should have one more probably for capital, yes. And there's easier ways to test for that, but I'm not doing that right now. Because one thing I could do is I could take your entry and convert it to all caps and then I only have to compare to capitals. Right? I'm not doing that though. We're just keeping it as simple as we can as far as programming at this point. Okay. So then here I'm getting date time. Um, we'll talk about renaming these later because we just want to see the code. We don't have to do anything with this, right? Or even this. We're all good here. Do you agree? So from this point all the way to this point, we should be okay. Where we need to start is food journal car, uh, code starts here. You see those hashtags? Mm -hmm. Looks like that. You'll find a line somewhere that says hashtag, hashtag, yeah. food journal code starts here. Okay. And then I say meal equals input. I'm asking for input from somebody. I don't necessarily need to do that yet, though, do I? Because I'm asking for input up top. So we're going to think about this one. We might not use that. Right here, I'm just going to throw a couple hashtags in there because I don't know if I want to keep it or not. I know I don't want to run it as is. I might need to change it, right? This here is where it creates the text file. Okay? <coughs> It's looking to open a file. Let me scroll up because some people can't see it where they're sitting. Can you see it over here? Okay. It's asking right here to open a file called journal.txt. If it doesn't exist, it appends and creates one. We don't want journal. What do we want to call it? Yeah. Let's just call it grades.txt. Always use names that make sense for your program. Remember, Hello World is all about giving you an A or an F, or you have to work for it or whatever, right? So that's the result. And here's the goal that we have right now. We're going to take the results from the small program we wrote, 
and throw it into a text file. And we're going to append that text file every single time. Instead of clearing it out and just adding the last value, we're going to be appending it to the file. Okay? So here we're creating, we're trying to open, if it's not there, we actually create that file called grades.txt. Cool so far? Glad you all agree. So, FW write. Remember, I'm opening it. Uh, I'm opening that value as f. F is a variable. That variable is being filled basically with this grades that text. It's looking at that as a file. So if I say f dot write, I'm saying write to that file, right? So we're looking at every line of code and we're explaining what's going on. Here, I'm telling it the first thing to write is the full date. Slash n means go to a new line. Okay, you should have seen that, right? That should have been in the text. So, slash n means go to a new line and I'm saying plus meal. Where did we get meal from? That was right here. Okay? So do I need that line right there? No. What could I put there instead of meal? Let's go all, I'm going to go all the way to the top and we're going to look at what we were dealing with. Um, how about instead of print you get an A, how about I turn that into a variable? <coughs> okay? And I'm going to call that uh, uh, grade equals, you get an A. Okay, so I can call it grade. So now I have a variable from the previous thing, right? And how about this? Instead of uh, print here, we're going to call this grade. I'm not going to print it to the screen. And right here, can I change this to grade? So everywhere I had print to put the grade in, instead of printing it to the screen, I am going to do what? Write it to a variable. Make sense? So now if I go back down to the other code, which was down here, I'm going to grades. I could say plus grade. Now, I don't have any other variables. Let's get rid of, well, let's get rid of this, because after this is done, I want to put the another new line, so I space things apart, and then I close it. So I open the file, I write to it, I close the file. Okay? Now, here I'm saying, well, meal entry equal equal y, or meal entry equal equal y, capital Y, lowercase y, right? I'm controlling. What I want to do is I want to go up here. And what did I call the input up here? Name. Right? So I'm going to go back down here. <coughs> And instead of this, I'm going to say um, lowercase. Name equal equal. That's not right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I did that on purpose. So while the name equals David or Nicholas, then 
what do I what am I doing? I'm literally going to take the code from up here, and I'm going to say, um, while that exists, I'm going to do all of this. So I'm going to take this while. I'm not going to get rid of this code yet because we still might want that. Okay, I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to take all that code and because I'm working with the while loop down here I made it here I'm actually going to paste it here okay now keep in mind I already have a while up there I don't need another while that's why they erred okay it's like saying, hey, no, you already have that. You're not going to put a while inside there. If you did put a while inside there, you got to tab it in. Okay? Because could you potentially do that? Absolutely you could potentially do that. Now all of a sudden, here's the thing. Someone originally said that they had a tab issue when you coded or pasted all that other text in. Well, if you know all of this has to be tabbed, you can literally, because the tabs are right, you can literally highlight all of it that you want. Done. And you could do that. Tab it once. And it keeps the structure. It just tabs everything over one tab from where it was. Okay. So we're fixing the code. You agree? Okay, now, what's the error we get here? Unexpected indent. Oh, well, that was probably because right here, okay, which that might give us a problem. We don't know. So I uh, hear I'm writing this there. Um, instead of write F eaten, what am I writing? What did I call it? Grade? Okay. And then write slash N puts a new line in. And then I close. Now here, I could say, do you want to start again or what have you? Let's just see what happens because I don't have any errors up to this point. Let's run it and see what happens. Okay? We know that we're going to stop at closing it and see we're just going to see what happens. Okay? You ready? Okay. We'll go back over it so if you fall behind we'll be okay. Okay? Um, so I'll enter my name. Ah, enter a new name. Do you want to enter another meal item? So I made it all the way down there. Now, we see exactly what happened. It created another text file for the date. We didn't want that, right? If I open grades.text, it says you get an A on this date. If I open this one it just says you get an A it used the date as the text <coughs> file name I didn't want that so I'm going to delete that text file okay I'm going to go back to my main code and in here we know that it happened after I hit the center right so right here I'll go back down to this code and I think logically what's going on. Ah, you see this right here? I'm trying to open a string full date dot text. Problem? Yeah, it's going to create a new file for the full date every time that piece of code runs. It's going to be called whatever the date is. 
And if the time was included in that date, which it is, and I keep running that, I'd get multiple files over and over again because the date would be different, right? Even if it's by a millisecond, it's different. So I don't want to do that. So I don't need that line of code, correct? I don't need to write the grade in there. What do I want to do? I made it all the way to this point. I want to f.close, correct? I wrote to it, I closed it. Do I have any meal entry that I want to do here? No. Oops. I don't have anything from here to here I need. Correct? Here, I'm not dealing with journal anymore. I'm dealing with grades. <coughs> now I'm going to read this value in. Okay? By the way, I am recording this too, so I'll post the recording, and if you need to, you can always follow along on that too. But all of a sudden, I'm saying, okay, now I'm looking for grades that text. If it exists, it's going to read the value in. I want to read it and write the line to the screen, right? So I called it grades.txt with open file path. Well, file path is grades.txt. Remember what I said way up at the beginning? If I wanted to, I could have put quote unquote grades.txt in here instead of file path. The, there is an advantage to doing, there is an advantage to doing a variable with that. What would that advantage be? If the text file name changes, let's say I decided to change it, I only have to change it one location. Okay. Um, if I go all the way to the top, because right now it says file path equals grades that text. If I go all the way up here, um, which was. I called it something else up here. Where was that? Well, I just called it fopengrades.txt. Somewhere I have the variable that I called it. Don't I? Maybe I didn't. I'm just looking because I thought I had a variable up here with it. Oh, no, I didn't. Well, we'll just leave that as is then. Okay. Um, if I already had a variable up top with grades.txt, I wouldn't have done that. I would have used the other variable, and I wouldn't have had to uh, do a new file path that way. I could have just put the other variable in here. Okay. And here I'm doing uh, as file path, which is FP. This can be anything. Uh, no, it can't be anything. It's got to be FP. Sorry. So with this file open as file path, I want to do line equals file path dot read line. I don't want to read the whole file. If I just do read, it will pull the whole file into a single line. I don't want to do that. I'm just pulling in the one read line. Okay. Then I say count equals one, and while line, so as long as there's a line in the file, so while I'm reading this line, I want line.strip, so I'm taking just the values in it, and then I'm <coughs> saying count equals blah, blah, blah. So here I'm saying print line.strip, so I'm stripping it of whatever. Let's see what happens. You ready? Pulled something in. Let's go over here to grades. This is what it looks like. For some reason, it's in an infinite loop. Remember how I said you can get an infinite loop? 
Was there a break in the other program? No. no? Let's try one. See what happens. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go back here. And uh, let me put a break here. And see what happens. Okay. Should have started over. You got a, yeah. It's still in an infinite loop, so it didn't break. So I've got to break this somewhere else. Okay. Let's do something else. How about instead of doing that? How about we keep this? Actually, let's do this. Somewhere I'm actually getting its infinite loop here, not here. No, it is here. I'm going to just, I'm going to uh, try something just to see what it's actually doing. Okay. Let me run this again. Yeah, it's an infinite <coughs> loop still. Okay. I go to grades.txt. You get an A. And it just keeps writing. So we've got to look for where the loop is. Before I do that, though, I'm actually going to delete the word file or the text file, right? Because I want to start with a fresh text file that's not continually filled. Um, because I want to see a very short result. Follow me? So if I hit delete right now, I'm going to delete this one, too, because we're not using that one here. So now I'm just on main. I'm going to run it again just for the heck of it and see what happens. I've got to clear that first. Now I'm going to stop this running and I want to look at grades. So it works fine for the very first one, right? Let me run it again and type and hit enter. Okay, so I've got it doing something different. I'm not quite sure what. If I hit stop and I look at grades again, So it's not appending the file right now. It's just kind of stopped. But it's also not writing it back to the screen, right? So if I go back into the code, now you see how this is working. What am I doing? Can someone tell me what I've been doing? <coughs> Number one, I've been writing a program without a flowchart. Don't do that, because you can get lost really quick. <coughs> but what I'm doing is something called troubleshooting, right? I'm taking that program in its simplest form, line by line, and trying different things to see what happens. And I'm trying to narrow down where my problem is. What I do know right now is what? A What's that? A there is a problem, but I also know that as long as I'm correct on the first one, it will take that data. Yes? So I'm thinking like maybe because it doesn't escape, it's not able to write? Yeah. That's quite possible too, right? It doesn't escape, so it's not going to write. So it's going to keep looping um, because it asks for a new name every time that it's not it's David, for example. Yeah. And that's probably it. 
Um, and I'm going to go back to something Nina pointed out last class, because remember how we had an infinite loop with when we did this program? We had an infinite loop, and it had to do with actually this. So, okay. Let's see what happens with this loop now, okay? Ah, we still got the loop. Okay. So let's see what the text file did, though. It did exactly what we expected. And it just keeps looping. So I'm going to delete the text file because I know that text file is bad. And then we go back in here. So we test different things and try different things. If I had a flowchart to go by, I could go back and look and say, okay, my logic is saying to do this, right? It's a nightmare. Yeah. See how you can, if you enjoy doing stuff like this and you like to solve problems, you can get lost in this stuff really quick where you lose track of time uh, and people just consider you to be sick. Right? Because you love programming, you love problem solving. The advantage is this. Programming is one of those things that you get immediate response, right? So your goal is to fix this program. If you've got this mentality, what you'll do is you'll just get stuck in it until you get that little endorphin from solving that problem. Then you're like, yeah, now let's go on with the next one, okay? We know that the problem doesn't exist here yet. We can read that in. The problem exists here. That problem exists somewhere in all of this mess. And remember up here, I'm still doing this. Right? As I go down through here, number one, I'm not using entry text anymore. I can get rid of those lines of code. I'm not using this entry text anymore. I'm not doing that while wow statement which that could have actually screwed me up, just so you know. Yeah. What's uh, shift tab? To, yeah, there we go. Okay. And there. So that's happening. All of this stuff here has to tab out, you know, tab all of it out, shift tab, there. Now I know I'm all set, I'm all the way back to the beginning. That stuff up here might actually be where my first results are coming from that print to the screen, right? So I might have a complete problem down in my other program. So how do I do this, right? I would have to comment all of this code out to test it. Follow me? So troubleshooting, it's a pain. We're going to be doing a lot of it. The, the key is understanding the language. The key is understanding what's happening on this, in the code, not necessarily, you know, yeah, you recognize you have an error, but as we talk about this stuff, pay attention to the code, not the problem all the time. We know we have a problem. We know what it's doing. Let's concentrate on the code look at it line by line and figure out what's going on. Okay? You do have homework out here. Uh, just so you know, it's in the week five folder, which is exercises for chapter three. Okay? So make sure you do that. If you don't do that assignment, I will have to uh, fail Nicholas. And guess what Nicholas will do promptly? He'll take care of my problem. Why? Because you made him fail. Nicholas would be like, ah, uh, guys, we got to talk. Get out of here. You're going to be late for whatever. Have a good day now. Yeah, I'll hear. Uh, today is the 24th. We'll give you a little while because I just posted it. Okay. So anyway, the assignment's also yes. Uh, 
Can I have a minute? What? Can I have a minute, please? After show you something. Let me just go to you. No, you can't. You can't have a minute. Minutes cost money. <laughs>